Marketing is not complicated, but it does have a lot of moving parts. Most marketing strategy is just common sense, but some do better than others in navigating this space. And some are just naturals. Here, we're about to demystify marketing strategy. So let's get going. This recording presents four steps in developing effective marketing strategy. My name is Dr. Sharon Skembury, and I've been teaching marketing and marketing strategy at universities around the world for more than 25 years. You can check out my publications on Google Scholar and LinkedIn, maybe connect with me there. I'll put some links in the description box below. So let's check out these four steps to developing effective marketing strategy. So here we've got the four steps summarized. Step one, monitor the macro. Step two, focus on core competencies. Step three, talk to the customer. And these first three steps are research steps. The fourth step is where we put together our marketing mix. So let's start with the question of what is marketing? The definition presented here comes from the American Marketing Association. And what they suggest is that marketing is a process of creation and exchange of value for various stakeholders, including the customer and the broader community. So then if we ask the question about what is strategy, we can think about a sailing ship on the ocean. And in this context, we it's not always smooth sailing. We've got wind currents above to deal with, ocean currents below, and we have to navigate through the storms. But you know what? So does everybody else. So if we think about the wind currents above as the macro environment that we have to navigate through, the ocean currents below as the industry dynamics that we have to deal with. Then on deck, we've got our organizational resources that we can manage. And so what this metaphor helps us to understand is that while we may not be able to change the direction of the wind, we can adjust the sails to help us better navigate the storms and the challenges that we face along the way. In other words, we need to be strategic. So a tool that can help us to understand and analyze this broad macro environment is the PEST framework. The PEST framework is a simplified tool that reminds us to consider the political macro factors, the economic macro factors, the social macro factors, and the technological macro factors. So when we use the PEST framework to conduct a macro environmental analysis, we are looking for the most relevant macro factors for each of these areas for our industry, for our particular business. So political macro factors include, for example, considering what's going on with regards to political stability and political policies in a particular country or particular region, what regulation and deregulation is coming down the line. And this is particularly important with regards to free trade agreements across um, geographic regions. The North American Free Trade Agreement established in 1994 and then revised in 2020 as the USMCA is deliberately designed to facilitate free trade between Canada, the US and Mexico. If you're involved in business in any one of these three countries, then you need to be aware of the content of this free trade agreement. Economic macro environmental factors include looking at economic stability, economic policies, economic climate and trends. What's going on with the inflation rates, the exchange rates, for example? What, where's the GDP at? We need to monitor these factors to understand and anticipate any changes in the economic macro environment. When we're considering the social macro environment, we want to look at demographic trends, for example. We want to consider population density. What's going on with regards to social and civil unrest? What about consumer behavior? What and how are consumers buying, consuming and disposing? And family and household structure is something that we've seen change over the years. These are social macro environmental factors that every business needs to consider, but some of these factors will be more important than others. In the technological macro environment, we need to look at system innovations, 
product innovations, sometimes incrementally, sometimes in a leapfrog fashion. RFD technology, QR technology, blockchain technology. These technologies have made significant impact with regards to supply chain management, for example. The internet arrived in the early 90s. Social media arrived in about mid-2000s. The iPhone arrived around 2007. Each of these technological innovations have enabled many businesses opportunities. Internet connectivity, web 2.0, interactivity, each of these technological innovations have changed the way that we do business and consume. So as astute marketers and business operators, we need to be very aware of these macro environmental changes. Automation and 3D technology are other macro factors that we need to monitor so that we can flex and curb and uh, ensure that our business is in the best position given these macro environmental factors changing so dramatically. So what we are doing with our pest analysis is we are, are identifying relevant macro factors and we are monitoring those factors to make sure that we as astute marketers and business owners are in the best possible position to navigate these changing winds. All right, so let's narrow the focus from the broader macro environmental analysis to the organizational level, where we conduct an internal analysis that identifies organizational strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So to do an internal analysis, the tool that we put to work is the SWOT framework. And examples of organizational strengths include a quality product, or maybe quality service. Weaknesses include system inefficiencies or maybe your online profile. Opportunities include product and service innovations and threats include, of course, our competition, maybe growth if we haven't got our system set up appropriately, and maybe changing regulations. Now, if we're going to suggest to focus in on our core competencies, we're looking at the organizational strengths, and then we're going a step further to ask, what's the essence of this organization? What is this organization better at than everybody else? What is this organization known for? So the quote presented on this slide comes from Prelahard and Hamill. And what they suggest is that every core competence is likely to be a critical success factor, but not every critical success factor will be a core competence. I'll put a link in the description box below for the original paper by Prelahard and Hamill published in Harvard Business Review in 1990. So what Prelahard and Hamill suggest is to consider the organization as a portfolio of core competencies. And they use the analogy of the tree, where the trunk and the major limbs of the tree are the core products. The smaller branches might be considered as the business units. The leaves and the fruit are the end products. And then nourishing and stabilizing everything is the root system. And the root system is the core competencies. So focusing on the organization's core competencies creates unique integrated systems. And these systems reinforce a fit across all of the skills and resources that your organization brings to the table. This generates a systematic advantage that your competitors cannot copy. Right, so, so far we've analyzed the macro environment, the big picture situation, and the internal organizational environment. We know what our strengths are, we know what our core competencies are. And here's an interesting aside, you can actually use that step one and step two and apply it to your individual situation. What do I mean by that? I'm suggesting to ask yourself, what are your career aspirations and what are the relevant macro factors to that intention? What are your strengths and weaknesses and what core competencies do you bring to the table? Let me know in the comments below. So step three in our process of developing an effective marketing strategy is talk to the customer. 
What a novel idea, right? But what we're really talking about here is market research. And to do market research, we start with our research question. Now, that's different to organisational symptoms. An organisational symptom example might be declining sales, but maybe what you need to be researching is what's going on on the front line because the reason an organisation has declining sales might be because of something else that needs to be investigated, such as employee attrition and low service quality. So go past the organisational systems that a manager might be suggesting is the problem and look for what really needs to be investigated here. So once we've got our research question, we can develop our research plan. How are we going to collect the data that we need? Are we going to do an on-site survey, an online survey? Do we need to do one-on-one -on -one interviews? And note that social media gives us a depth of insight and an abundance of data on the customer's point of view. So don't look past that. Once we've collected the data, then we need to analyse the data and devise our strategic actions going forward. Okay. So when we have a plan, then we collect the data, analyze the data and turn that data into useful information. So we translate our market research findings into research informed strategy. So our first three steps of analyzing the macro environment, analyzing the internal environment, doing some market research, these analytical steps enable us to arrive at the marketing mix. They enable us to design a research-informed marketing mix. And this marketing mix comprises of various elements, such as the product and brand strategy, marketing communications and digital communications, distribution and logistics, and sales and pricing. So we'll focus in on more specifics about the marketing mix in another video. For now, if you find this content useful and you think you might like to work with me, then use the link in the description box below to schedule your free 30 minutes consultation. I look forward to hearing from you. So thanks for tuning in and appreciate you liking, sharing and subscribing. Welcome any comments below and see you again soon.